Welcome back to our channel. My name is Samuel. I'm Amanda. And this is the Samuel and Amanda show where we talk about money, marriage and life. So firstly, Amanda, how has your week been? What have you been up to? My week's been pretty good. I've been usual hanging with the kids, enjoying the sunshine. The weather's like changed now, but I feel like we've really made the most of the weather and I've just been, yeah, sorting, doing lots of kiddie things and yeah. And you've been that. working as well, you know, we've been we've been moving some of our properties to social housing. Yeah, I've been doing that as well. We've been managing, so, like, we've been managing yeah. reaper projects yeah. and um, all kinds of stuff. And I've been running events this week, so I've just literally yesterday and today been running the Lease Option Bootcamp. We also, when we film these, sometimes people might think, you know, do we film lots of podcasts and then schedule them out? Or do we <laughs> film it and then put it out, um, you know, schedule it for like the Saturday ahead or whatever? No! Like when you watch these chats, it's usually minutes before we actually said and that's it. Very correct. It's the closest <laughs> thing to live as you'll get because right now it's Saturday evening and it's probably I don't know, half past five, so yeah. you should be watching this about seven and onwards. Um, but the biggest question that Amanda gets asked all the time is how do you maintain your white teeth? Oh wow! Which, I'm reading the comments. I should have like a Colgate sponsor or something. Maybe I'm reading the comments. It's just like Amanda's <laughs> teeth are white. Amanda's teeth are white. Amanda's teeth are very I, white. Oh my gosh! I use Colgate to brush my teeth, and I think maybe my red lipstick helps them stand out a bit more as well. But yeah, I just brush. Also, I'm doing this. I'm doing this thing this week where no, not this week, this month. Yeah. Where I'm only eating vegetables, fruit, and meat. So zero carbs or or anything like that, and it's going pretty well. It's going I think you've well. done so well so far. Like yeah, I'm like four pounds down. Look at me. Look at how slim my face is looking right now. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> getting his summer good. body ready. I'm getting my summer body ready, but also I just don't. I just don't want to be at the crash courses because we're back at the crash courses and I just don't want to be you know belly hanging out on stage <laughs> at the crash courses. So I'm, I'm trying to get. Um, in fact, lockdown officially doesn't properly end until the end of July. Yeah, end of July now. July the They've 19th. Extended it, haven't they, so. What did you think of the extension? So annoying. I think it actually ends the day before my birthday. It does. The 19th of July. My yeah. birthday is the 20th. So. Because apparently what happened was Amanda had a meeting with Boris. <laughs> and she was like, look, dude, look, dude, if you want to delay the lockdown, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but July 20th is my birthday. Yeah. And by then, na 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 na. So it lifts on the 19th. Yeah, it lifts on the 19th. But I mean, we still can do quite a lot of things at the moment anyway. Yeah. Like we can go out to eat and stuff like that. The thing is, so lockdowns are officially not lifted because I want to be able to say I got back in shape by the end of lockdown. Because okay. that way, lockdown would have been so long, I got in shape, back out of shape, and back in shape, baby! Uh, boom. All in <laughs> lockdown. Um, okay, cool. So. We've got the crash courses coming up. Exciting. And I want to talk to you, Amanda, about from a behind the scenes perspective. Okay. What is it like? Because you travel with me mm -hmm. quite a lot. Um, so, firstly, what's the purpose of you coming to the crash courses? Because you don't do much on stage. Maybe a little teeny. Mm, barely anything on you stage. You hate me pulling you up on stage. Yeah, I'm like, oh my goodness, I just want to watch. Occasionally I pull her up on stage. <laughs> Normally she sits in the audience and I'll, sometimes people don't know that she's my wife and they'll be like, oh, it's a great training day, isn't it? Isn't it fantastic? And she's like, yep, I've seen it a thousand times. In fact, the I content, know. the content was probably mostly created by her. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen it a thousand times. I should know it inside out. But yeah. um, why do you come? I usually come just to keep you company, really. Just to sort of keep you company in the evenings when you're just at the end of the day by yourself. I'll tell you, biggest <laughs> secret, okay, biggest secret is this. Doing crash courses or just training in general can be very, very lonely. And the reason it can be so lonely is because I remember like just before the lockdown happened, like 2019, I'll be at an event, hundreds of people there and lots of staff members, crew members, and it's like most people there are there to learn about property, but for me to just be able to just chill and just have a conversation, like it's, you know, and if I'm away, like this tour is going to be a crash course in Swindon and then Portsmouth and then blah, 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 blah. I just thought if I'm on my own, I'm going to be having to talk property constant, 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 and even like in the breaks or when in the evenings I'll be having dinner, it's going to be people asking me about property or whatever. <laughs> so it's nice for Amanda I'm there to, to be there. to spice up his uh, his tour. <laughs> yeah, to spice up my tour and, uh, and 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 be able to just you know when I go to bed, just be able to just 
have a little bit of normality. Yeah. So that's cool. And also just generally you're amazing to be around. Oh, and we thank can you. I know ideas I think and... we like travelling together and stuff. So I don't think that changes when it comes to you working as well. We just travel together. Yeah. So. And we can bring the kids. Yeah. Um, and, and different things like that. Yeah. So it's really, really, really good. Um, in other news, exciting news. My book became an official Amazon bestseller today. So, because previously it was it was bestseller in some categories like the Kindle version, but it was now it's officially like it's got you can see it says number one bestseller. It's on amazing, the front of it. you've done so well with that. Yeah. Like it's such an achievement. I mean, writing a book in itself is like really, really hard, but to get it on and then to get it number one bestseller just shows how much value is in there. So if you haven't already downloaded copy or ordered it then I Look, would highly the recommend number one oh can you even see that best seller yeah. so I'm really 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 pleased about that that is incredible that's like yeah well and it, done and, and how many days has it, has it hasn't even been a week yet has it or, nope it's yeah. been five days another secret is the secrets of property development I wrote that book how long did it take me to write the whole book oh like days how long was it? I don't remember. What? But literally, okay, he didn't even tell me about it. You never even did. You were just kind of doing it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've written this book. And I was like, what? You hadn't even told me about it. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, I'm like finished now. One day. I was just like, what? One day. It took yeah. me one day to write the book. Oh, there we go. The light is better. Hey! <laughs> yeah, it took me, took, took me one day to write the book. Um, and one of the questions that we had, we didn't really have many questions from, from, last, from last week. So if you've got questions for me and for Amanda, Anything at all, just go ahead and ask. Someone asked me if my dissertation that I wrote about biblical economics and being a, a, a Christian business person, whether that is still around. And it is. Aspects Locksmiths. I, I basically summarized the, the whole thing and put it into a book. And the book is this book. Which was my very first book, which is called Do the Possible, Watch God Do the Impossible. Um, we kind of wrote this together, but... Mandy didn't do too much, but it was just the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> what, does well, it mean? what does it mean? Do the possible, what you got to do the impossible? Well, it's it's pretty obvious, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what you say when you don't know. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah. You know, if you don't understand that, then you're a moron. <laughs> what does it mean? Joking. What does it mean? Uh, what do you mean? You tell us what it means, author of the book. <laughs> Hello. Come on, come on. You exp do the possible. Watch God. Yeah, do take one step and mm. then like have faith, and then God will carry you through. And you know. Yeah, I guess. I think I think a lot of people as well. Like even when we go, you know, when we go to like we start going to Zambia and doing talks and stuff. You know, a lot of them are saying a lot of the people there they've not got much money, they've not got much, and they're saying, oh, we're going to pray, we're going to pray that God will give us more money or God will give us and it's just like actually no you you need to do the possible you need to do everything you can do um do the thing have the have the power um and then God will do the impossible um so you know that's kind of what it is but this whole book is really about how as a and it's not just for Christians I mean I wrote it initially for myself it was my own it was like a study for myself because I was grappling with the whole <laughs> issue of being a good person and being a Christian and also also being a businessman and trying to make money and this is how they actually the two go hand in hand as opposed to conflict so yeah check it out it's on amazon and this is just one of my six books i think i'm gonna reread that because really? yeah i haven't read it well i read it when you released it but i think it'd be a good one to read again do you think you should read it again so that you can understand what the title means <laughs> do you think that'd be a really oh, good stop. idea whatever whatever that'd be a good idea <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, if you, apologies if you can hear our kids <laughs> screaming <laughs> in the background, play fighting and going crazy. Alright, of our three kids, Luke, Ruby and Jessica, why do I call Jessica Ruby and Ruby Jessica? I don't know, they are very similar. They're the same person. They're literally, yeah, we say they're the same person. If they were just like born at the same time, they would have been like identical twins. Age for age, the they same. exactly the same. They're all the same. Crazy. I look at pictures of what Jessica looked like at, no, of what Ruby looked like at Jessica's age. It doesn't matter because they're the same person yeah. anyway. And it's just scary. I isn't know it? it is. I feel like, yeah, they're going to be like such bezies growing up because they seem so alike already. It'll be interesting to see what Jessica's personality is going to be like as she gets older. You but. said in a recent interview. Recent interview, go With on. me. Okay. Well, it was a podcast discussion. It feels like an interview because I come up with all the content. <laughs> Whatever. You said you potentially wanted one more kid. Yes, I did. I did. Now, after four months of having a newborn, 
And also, you know, the, the issues that come with... Have I said too much? No. What no, I mean no. is, do you know, like, you tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of belly fat. Oh my gosh. This, like, mum-tum thing. Okay. So oh, by the way, I, I, I mean, I don't, I can't even see it. Like, yeah. to me, I'm like, what, what, huh? what, okay. what? So I had a C-section and it was my third C-section and this time around just everything's just been much harder. Usually like I just bounce back weight wise. This time it's taken a while. I've she got looks a little pretty bit, slim to me. Ugh, I've got a little bit, well not even a little bit, I've got mum tum. Should but do. it's still like a bit swirling as well and stuff. It's just like ugh. But anyway, I don't know. Has that affected anything or do you still want four kids? I feel like for vanity reasons I'd probably be like I don't want any more just because I don't want any more damage done to my body but... I think just looking at the bigger picture and a fourth child would just bring Sounds something. like she still wants four. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't care man, I'll have the mum time, whatever. You know, I'll have they another so kid. It's joy. It's just like amazing what kids But why four? If they bring that much joy, why not five? No, because I think, you know, what kind of car are you going to drive when you have five kids? <laughs> <laughs> a mum car. I oh, know, I'm already no going difference. down that route. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, how are you enjoying your mum car? Mum car's alright, I mean, I don't love it. it We're going to do a tour at some point. We, we need to show off Amanda's new car, <laughs> which will be here in 2023. So we'll be able to show you around, show you what an electric car looks like. Um, Why did you say 2023? Because that's where Murray put the order in for. Oh, no, 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 he's winding me up. <laughs> there's just she, a delay, there's just a delay. There's a delay, and in the yeah. meantime she has a mum car. What she doesn't realise is that is the new car. <laughs> That is the new car. If that's the case, we'll be swapping cars. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, let's see if we've got any questions. We didn't have too many questions. Again, put them okay. in, put them in, put them in. Um, how has your faith helped you in your marriage? And would you have ever considered marrying outside your faith? So, I would have never considered marrying outside of my faith just because, I don't know, I think it's just really hard. It's confusing for the kids as well. Like how would you bring up your kids? But... You know, not judging anyone who has, but I don't think I would have. Um, I, there's no right or wrong, everybody's different. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, someone got all annoyed actually in the comments. I can't see if I can find it, but someone's like, how can you try and give relationship advice? It's like... Oh, really? It's like, well, calm down. Like, we are literally oh just... God, we God. are literally just sharing our opinions. Exactly, it's our opinion. Our life, our anyone. opinions. If you disagree, <laughs> that's cool. If everyone was the same, it'd be boring. Exactly. Um, that's funny. So how has your faith helped you in your marriage? I don't know, I just think it's faith, it's something that you take seriously, so when you get married, you get married but, um, in front of God and you make a covenant, you know, so it's just, I don't know, faith has helped because, I don't know. <laughs> Would you rather me ask you what the title of the book means? Would that be an easier <laughs> no, question no. to answer? I'm just trying to think because I've never actually thought about it, it just does, it just helps. See, your question. I feel like I take, I, take, it's, I take the marriage very seriously, it's not something that I take lightly. And when but how's that to do with faith? Would you not, anyway? Well, I don't know. You don't know because... You get, I, you get married in a church, don't you, before God? So, for me, it's... I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I'll answer the question while you think of a proper answer. Oh, my goodness. Go on, then. <laughs> okay, how would, oh, faith, wise how would your faith help you in your marriage? I mean, for me, interestingly, if it wasn't for the fact that I had a faith in God and was Christian, I wouldn't be married to Amanda. And the reason I wouldn't be married to Amanda is the few reasons. Number one is because our culture differences... Amanda being from a Zimbabwean family, her dad being, you know, strict traditional African Zimbabwean man, wasn't feeling, as we've talked about before, her being with a white English man. And I approached your dad and I said, look, um, you know, actually, we're one, brother. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like we're one in Christ. And ultimately, and I think because your dad is Christian, it was almost the fact that he couldn't really argue with it's like the common no ground. we're separate and we were it's like no i believe that we all come from one and i believe that we're all so i think i feel like yeah common ground so I, I think i think um you know you wouldn't have even been allowed to marry me if it wasn't for faith and i think that for me faith is it's hard it is a hard question to answer because it's kind of like everything it's, it's really hard to imagine what it would be like if we didn't have the yeah. faith if i didn't have a faith because it's just it's just how the way that i see everything is mm. through my is through the perspective of my faith in God. Yeah. Um, but would I consider marrying outside of my faith? I personally can't see myself marrying outside of Amanda. So I, again, it's like quite a hard one to really <laughs> even visualize. Um, but I don't know if you've got anything else to add to that. 
Um, no, I don't. But I guess the only other thing that I could say is that in marriage, obviously, you have ups and downs and stuff. I guess going back to the Bible and being able to read through that to have it strengthen us and stuff and show us how people live there, then I guess that helps. Yep. Uh, I can just read the guy that was having uh, having a rant. Go on. No, I won't even read it. He's all right. Read He's in nice. You read it after. <laughs> I'm gonna read it after. All right. Someone said, um, just a question. When people when people say things about Samuel, how does Amanda feel and react? <laughs> That's such a good question. Of course, she feels amazing because they're saying amazing stuff. <laughs> right? Of course, it's only nice things. <laughs> oh my gosh, when people say stuff about Samuel, honestly, I'm just like. Why I oughta? No, I'm just like, oh, you're obviously just not happy with yourself and with your life and they're just a hater and I just think they're just jealous and haters. I, I honestly don't really pay it much attention, but I do, before I used to think, oh, it's so annoying, but to be honest, I don't even really focus on it. It's just like whatever, but it is annoying. I, I think as well, it's only really online. Because anyone that Oh yeah, no one's ever walked up to Samuel and said, I don't like you because of this or... So it's just online, so... You're greedy, you're rich, uh, yeah. you're this, it just, yeah. It's literally just a keyboard warrior, so... It's just online. Mm. And online, the online world and the real world are two very different places. True. And I think you need to, you know, need to remember that. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. Totally agree. Do and people, yeah. Do people, people ever say bad stuff about you? You don't ever get any slack online. I don't you really. only have wonderful comments. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And if anyone does ever message anything bad, it's usually about my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're thinking of sending me a message about how bad my husband is, then just don't bother, because I don't even... You don't even read it. I don't even read it, so don't Yeah. Bother. Okay, cool. Uh, last question is, what is it like living together, working together, raising kids together, doing everything together? Do we not just need our own time? Like... Even though we You were warned work. against that as well. Pardon? You were warned against that. Yeah, I was that. warned against that. Because um, I was like, do you want to come and work on the business? And everyone told her, be careful. Yeah, they were like, oh my goodness, work with your partner. But I actually like it, but I mean, we do have separate time. Like, sometimes we'll be in the house at the same time, but we're not like, literally like this with each other all the as time. As much as I'd like to be. <laughs> as much as I'd We're not like, like this all the time. Like, we do have our own space and we have our own time and stuff, but we actually happen to really enjoy each other's company as well, which is quite nice. So we happen to be BFFs. We're BFFs. Like when we got married, I said it's like being married to your best friend and you're having like a constant sleepover forever. And I just love it. So it's Aww, just fun. That's sweet. Yeah, it's fun being Are we having a sleepover tonight? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that is the end of this week's podcast. Uh, we're going to shoot. If you want to comment below, questions, thoughts, suggestions, anything at all, we will do our best to answer next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks See you next for time. Watching. Bye.